like the newspaper. Welcome to the meeting. You're right. Good, mate. Yeah, enjoying our time here. Yeah, Dave. Quite an interesting stage of your career. I mean, you're not a young guy in the team, but you're still quite new in the team. Mm. How, how are you finding, it? especially as I guess the team's going through a little bit of a, a difficult run at the moment? Um, well, I guess I can sort of add my experience where I see fit. Um, right now, it's a pretty tight ship. Um, I think our performance on the weekend, obviously, whilst we're frustrated with the result, um, we are building in the right directions and in the right direction, and there are elements of our game that we are happy with. Um, but obviously, you know, a team against a team like the All Blacks, you need to stay in it for 80 minutes. So, for us this week, that's our main focus. You know, turn that, you know, first half, first 30 minutes into a longer period of play, and um, we've shown what we're capable of as a team, and it's, it's exciting for us. What is the key to keeping that tight shift, especially off the field? I'm wondering what are things like with you guys and in the squad as you trying to get the on-field stuff sorted? <clears throat> I think the theme's been around connections, mate. Um, something this group's, you know, this group's been together now for two or three years, so that, that's pretty strong. Um, there's always ways we can build on that, and I think Eddie's quite big on that. Um, he knows that the nucleus of the team is the players, and the players need to run the show. Um, not literally, but obviously, you know, if we as a group are strong and, and, and connected well on the field, and off the field, then um, I think the performance will show that you stick together as a team um, it, when when it's tough. And Eddie Jones, can you talk a little bit about what it's like now with um, Eddie back in charge of the Wallabies? Were you? No? You go. <laughs> I'll get to oh, me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, mate, it's been spot on. It's been spot on so far. Um, yeah, just he's a fantastic operator. Um, the boys have, have, have loved his injection. Um, he, he definitely challenges your way of thinking in a, in a positive way that um, even for the older blokes, you know, you haven't been exposed to. I've been in different teams and, and um, I thought I knew how a program was meant to be run and um, how things during the week were meant to be done. And he sort of opened your eyes to, to different possibilities on how to do stuff um, that's interesting. And it's... Um, and I see it as positive in this group. Um, I see it in po as positive in um, you know the teams that I'll be in in the future that you can implement. But yeah, mate, it's been um, eye-opening. And obviously, he's such a um, he's a, he's a learner. You know, he always wants to continue to learn, continue to progress in his own um, in his own career. He's sort of he's sort of spoken about that with the amount of teams he goes and visits. So I think he just obviously has um, a, a really good worldly experience about coaching and. Um, and he is a world-class coach. And just one last one for you, Dave. In terms of the hooking situation, I'm mean, look at the All Blacks. Um, an interesting mix with Tokiaho, mm. had a big discovery last year, and Cody Taylor started this year like he's a 10 years younger. Um, Dane Coles, obviously, the sort of niggly old ball mm. in the team. What do you make of the All Blacks sort of collection of guys who, who might be facing you on Saturday? Oh, I think um, all three are world-class hookers, um, and I think they can just pick and choose their hooker based on how they want to play their game and it might be on base who, who they're playing in their opposition as well. Um, obviously they, they went with Cody and and um, Takiyaho on the bench last week but for all I know that could change and it looks like over the last couple of games that has sort of swapped a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have too much to add on that. I, I just know they're quality players and um, they all offer different different things in the game. Jordan, um, what's it been like for you? you, you you had a few of the time on the sidelines, I think, haven't you? You sort of just come back into a bit of rugby recently. How are you feeling? How's your game going? Uh, yeah, just had my first game back on the weekend, so it was, um, so yeah, good to get back after three months on the sidelines, so yeah, credit to the medical stuff. Have you, um, you played here? You played at Forsyth Bar Stadium? Yeah, once, yeah. Oh, did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Good atmosphere. Yeah, and um, in terms of the you know, dry ball and firm deep, do you guys which, mm. could that serve you guys this weekend, you know, against the All Blacks? Um, yeah, I think it's a bit similar to home. Um, you don't get too many dry, dry decks in New Zealand, so yeah, you're always grateful when you do, I guess. Um, any other plans for the week in Dunedin and the city? You'll have a day off on Thursday. What do you guys be surfing plans? It's a bit cold out there in golf. Do we? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's a question for this guy. Yeah. No, I've got no idea. We'll find out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure what to do in Dunedin. Enjoy it. Yeah.
Thanks, guys. Anything online if you want to chuck your cameras on to ask a question? Yeah, Dave. Um, mate, just looking at some of the odds for this match is quite outrageous. The Wallabies, uh, so the All Blacks are listed as one dollar and one cent, suggesting that you guys were one in a hundred of chance of winning. I mean, is that a bit harsh, or is that just the reality? Oh, res respectfully, um, I uh, I don't know if that means much to us, to be honest. Um, you know, we're looking to build this week, and what the odds are, what the odds are. I'm not a betting man, so um, yeah. Eddie was mentioning that you, you know, the line-out wasn't getting as much pay as you quite like. Have you guys been addressing that at all? Yeah, definitely. It sort of goes back to that connection as well, just off our, um, off our mall. I definitely think that there was an opportunity to uh, get a little bit more pay there, and we just couldn't execute that last bit. So, um, yeah, I thought that was, uh, a, you know, a strength in the initial phases, and then we sort of we lost that connection there. So, um, yeah, definitely a work on for us this week. How can you sort of counteract the sort of the motions that are going to be running quite high over there? Obviously, quite a few of the uh, veteran All Blacks are playing the last match in New Zealand. Same with the coach. Um, have you spoken about that at all? Oh, not particularly, mate. No, we haven't. Um, you know, we respect the All Blacks and playing at home, but you know, we're looking to get after it this weekend, and um, it, it doesn't particularly matter where the venue is. Thank you, Dave. Just on our, um, I think you see season's over. We're just you talk about the, that connection piece. What does someone like him bring, particularly to a group off the field, in just terms of? his leadership that we might not see on the field. Yeah, well, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Nath. I think what the spectators see in Al is like, he's an abrasive player, he's a leader on the field, but they don't see what's off the field. And um, yeah, he, 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 is the, uh, he is the binding figure within our group, I believe. Um, he's one of, the, one of the great men within us that sort of drives everyone to be better and drives standards. So obviously it's a huge loss and it was gutting um, being out there with him when he got injured, but I know he'll come back bigger and better and he's already um, helping us and helping the leadership group. And I think um, he'll play a pretty pivotal role getting through his rehab and touching base and that. So, you know, um, it isn't the first time that this has happened in the Wallabies and um, we've got boys that can step up. That's the main thing, you know, whereas looking previously, we might not have had that depth. Now we've got sort of three or four in each position that are looking to, um, have a crack and so whatever happens this weekend in terms of selection I know that um, you know the boys will be ready to go. Just building on that um, Jordy to bring you in you know Al seems like the, the bone of the forwards but if you look at the backs it's from an outside looking in it seems like it could be like a Lenny or something like that how do you go you know, stepping into that 13 how do you go about to try and you know replicate his what he brings to the side and whilst adding your own flair? Uh, yeah um, yeah obviously having Hadn't let him in there before. Um, yeah, like you said, is that that bridge between the back line. So just probably not trying to do too much, but in saying that, just um, doing your role and not trying to be too extra. As the, the slotting in the third end, you spent a lot of time sort of um, in the back three for the Reds. What was that conversation like with Eddie? Is this kind of the position he sees you best in, or is it just best fit in this in the situation that you're in right now? Uh, I think the. The thing with the Wallabies outside backs at the moment is, you know, they like us to, you know, have that versatility seeing Kells and, and Hodgie and, and all the other boys fill in at other roles and wherever it needs to be. So I think having that versatility helps the group and strengthens, strengthens us to, yeah, us as, as a team. And I guess that, um, for, for any of you guys, I believe this is probably the last game for that World, Scott, World Cup squad will be named for France. Do you sense that extra competitiveness around the group to really sort of send a statement before Eddie names that final squad? Um, yeah, I think everyone's just thinking about the next game, not really the, the selection part of things. Mm -hmm. We're all pretty focused on on trying to back up after, you know, those, those first three losses. I think we've got a, a lot to make up for, but, um, you know, everyone's pretty pretty level-headed in that department and, and trying to make each other better at training so that we can come up with a with a dub hopefully mm -hmm. soon. Jordan, how'd you enjoy being reunited in the midfield with Samu? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good. I hadn't, um, hadn't played with him there in a while, so it was, it was, uh, it was good reminiscing with him before the game and 
yeah, it's good to step out there, play with them again. You obviously like the chance to build on that combination? Um, yeah, hopefully. See how we go. Uh, Dave, um, after the game, Eddie Jones said that if someone had come from Mars and looked at the first 20 minutes, they would have thought the gold team was the better team. Obviously, after that, things changed. What do you need to do? What are the key areas you think you need to do to extend that 20 minutes through to 80 plus? Uh, just do it for longer. Um, pretty simple message. Just um, There are a couple of clinical things we did wrong just in that last period before half time that I think we can clean up and um, you know we're going into half time and it's a different different story but mate the, the basic of it is just do do it for longer um, and the challenge within our within our group is can we do it for longer and I believe we all can and we all believe we can so we just got to show that you know otherwise we're going to have continue to have these media questions about uh, why we're performing for only a certain section of the game and not the whole game but Mate, it's a pretty simple message for us this week. We just need to do it for longer. Does that um, become a motivator, like the media questions or the fan questions as well, I guess, like that that kind of, um, you know, focus on that, that drawing it out for longer? Uh, again, respectfully, not really. Um, media is going to say what they're going to say. Um, you know, it, it's within our group, you know. We, we, we need to, we need to um, be better and be able to do this for longer, and we will. Is that kind of a fitness issue then or concentration or like what, what can you bring it back to when you're playing such a good team and things are, are kind of getting away from you? What, you know, what, what's the improvement there? Just nailing those moments, mate. I don't, I don't think it's a fitness issue for us. Um, yeah, we, we, we've gotten that balance right at training. I think boys are working extremely hard off the field um, so that they're in physical condition to, to compete with um, the top teams. Um, it's just those little moments in the game, just uh, being clinical there, and and, and a, a lot will shift our way, I believe. Thanks. I'm just uh, sorry. I think it might have been Jed Holloway who, who talked about being kind of flogged in training in the lead up to that game. Have you noticed this season, uh, because perhaps you're looking forward more to a World Cup and something, uh, you know, down the track a bit more, that that you are. That the training is harder than it was, for instance, last season or season before, at the similar stage. No, I, I just you know, with each coach comes different training, and we're just adapting <laughs> to a new style of training. And um, you know, we had a hard couple of days leading into it, but we didn't have a game on the weekend before um, last week, so it's a great opportunity to actually get some work in. Um, so no, I haven't sort of found it. You know, it's it's uh, a typical test arena rugby style program and you know it's difficult it's hard but it's meant to be because um you know you got to play you got to put in 80 minutes of work